You're watching Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. 2022, uh, early part of the January, and of course, we're looking at the early part of the year as well. There's a lot of opportunities abound. A lot of people are trying to think about changing their careers. In fact, uh, many of us are indeed actively looking uh, for jobs. In fact, there's a survey here done by Robert Walters Malaysia Survey. As many as 45% of respondents are already actively looking to change jobs. 75% of them are actually optimistic about the job opportunities in their respective industries. It kind of makes sense because the economy is indeed reopening and a lot of employers are rehiring. Here to discuss this a little bit more is Tan Irene. She is the country manager for Robert Walters Malaysia. Uh, Irene, let's talk a little bit more about the survey that you guys just did. Maybe some key features of the survey. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me today, Ibrahim. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I also just speak in general, right? This, uh, the kind of skill sets that is in demand in the market right now. Uh, first and foremost, in finance, we see that there's a strong need for FP&A candidates as well as cost control as companies uh, look to manage finances and cash flow strategically. Uh, in the segments of high net uh, work clientele across banking industries, we also see that top performing sales professionals are highly sought after. Um, there will also be a need for professional skill in digital payment fraud management as transaction becomes increasingly digital. Yeah. Um, now, uh, as for technology, technology talent with experience in new tech such as blockchain, AI, RPA, cloud and 5G will also be in high demand. Um, uh, for supply chain, companies will be looking to fill in roles such as warehouse, uh, warehouse distribution center operations, particularly professionals with proven experience in operations to support the growth of e-commerce. Um, and you will also notice that across manufacturing industries, there's a gradual increase in demand for professionals with knowledge in robotics intelligence as companies see the importance of adopting industry 4.0 in their manufacturing processes. There's a lot of um, items in terms of the changes that businesses are adapting. Uh, we've been talking about this for the past two years now. Businesses are uh, more comfortable working, uh, having their employees working from home and as well as work from office. Um, the accelerated digital transformation across industries is of course a key feature across uh, employers as well. Uh, and uh, the utilization of data analytics as well as AI and e-commerce is also quite uh, highly adopted. One uh, company that I spoke to very recently on my show is Habib Jewels, uh, the uh, jeweler. Um, he was talking about the adoption of customers buying high uh, item or high ticket priced item through e-commerce. So, you know, even with uh, jewelry items or luxury items, people are already comfortable uh, adopting uh, purchases through e-commerce and therefore businesses have the need uh, to go for the omni-channel approach. There's a lot of this going on right now. Where do you see the key features for 2022 is going to be like, particularly when it comes to employers wanting skills that are inherently in demand from the employees right now? Yeah. So in my view, there are top three um, unifying factor of skill sets that uh, is required across um, different type of industries, be it banking, manufacturing, or commercial industries. So number one, as you rightfully said, tech and transformation skill sets will remain to be the focus for most organizations as companies uh, accelerate their efforts to adopt new technology. That's number one. And number two, um, Data analytics will also be a very important skill set for professionals across all industries. This is in line with the increasing use of technology in data management and the need for analytic tools in decision making and strategic direction. And last but not the least, you probably will also hear the buzzword, which is uh, ESG, right? Uh, which stands for the environmental, social and governance uh, arena, right? And this area will pick up pace as companies seek to solidify the function to meet the needs of socially responsible investors. So the prominence of ESG is especially uh, prevalent across financial services and manufacturing industries. These are very important uh, but not surprising kind of features. Um, is there anything surprising in your opinion when it comes to the Robert Walters uh, survey? Um, so based on our observation as well as a white paper that we have launched in the past before, right? Um, we strongly encourage that employers when you are hiring for 
skill set, right? Other than tech, digital, data analytics, or ESG skill set that we just mentioned earlier, we also strongly encourage that employers hire based on potential instead of just purely just based on direct experience. So traditionally, I think employers uh, like hiring people with the actual skill set coming from similar portfolio or industry background, which is very advantageous because immediately as you get into the role, you're able to pick up the skills and run the show already and hit the ground running, right? But realistically, in um, today's world where there's a lot of uncertainty, things are unpredictable, um, it is very important that we hire someone with strong agility uh, and demonstrate traits right, where they are able to contribute to the business um, in the long run. So hiring someone that who has the exact right skill set is not a bad thing, but to open up and expand the talent pool, uh, we strongly encourage that uh, employers uh, look into hiring people based on potential traits rather than just based on the exact skill set. Um, that also comes with the advantage of when you hire someone that and maybe it's an N minus one, right? To take up a role that is ch slightly challenging for them, um, you're likely to drive a uh, tighter engagement level and um, you know, able to nurture loyalty and retention in the long run. So, uh, Irene, I want to deep dive on that one actually. H hiring traits, but not necessarily the exact skill set. Could you give us a little bit more example? Perhaps some business owners and hiring managers that are currently watching us can actually get a few tips from this. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I think in the first place, right, uh, we need to educate uh, our HR and hiring manager in terms of this area, in terms of hiring based on potential. Uh, the organization has to come to a consensus or an alignment that, right, they are open to hiring for such a talent. Uh, because realistically speaking, let's say if you are only, let's say, let's give an example in tech, right? Um, the skill sets in tech are very much niche, niche and scarce in the market, which means in Malaysian market, there are not many talent right, with the direct skill set just yet. So that also means that it takes a, a while for us to upskill them, train them, develop them and whatnot. So uh, first, we need to get alignment from the organization that uh, they're open to hire based on potential. Um, number two, once you're open to hire for potential, right, then when you're speaking to whether you're, when you're speaking to recruiters, hit hunters like ourselves, or when you are speaking to a HR and TA, right, you tell them specifically, right, what are the, some of the must-have requirement and some good-to-have requirement. So we encourage that uh, HR and hiring manager, right, to expand their requirement a little bit more instead of saying that, okay, out of the 10 requirements, 10 things are very important. But instead, out of the 10 requirements that you say that is very important, say maybe out of 10, you emphasize on the three most important skill set, and the rest, you keep an openness that, okay, uh, we are willing to trade, we are willing to upskill the talent. So that way, right, uh, when you hire this person, you can also chart out a very clear career progression plan for this person that, okay, this is your strength, this is your area of development, uh, in the area of development, right, we have such resources, system, infrastructure that we can help you to upskill or we will send you for training locally or regionally. This is what you can expect within six months or one year. Um, and slowly upskill them. Um, I mean, when you have a very clear career and training development plan like that, right, it also helps to uh, keep, keep the employees um, in the long run. All right, I understand that. Irene, we'll go for one short break before we continue our conversation with Robert Walters. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. You're watching Notepad. I have with me the country manager uh, for Robert Walters, uh, Tan Irene. Uh, Irene, let's talk a little bit more about the perspective of or the point of view of the employees right now. 75% in your survey is rather optimistic. We mentioned these statistics earlier that they will get a job uh, this year um, and in their respective industries. And uh, you know, when, when we have something like 45% of respondents saying that they're already actively looking for a job, do you feel that that's 
is that healthy for an organization? I mean, when when you have, you know, look, I'm just looking over my studio right now using this survey. Half of them are actually actively looking for jobs. Is that is that a new way of doing things uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, employee loyalty um, and trying to grow the business, but at the same time trying to pursue or further uh, individual uh, professional capabilities? Yeah, um, definitely this is a very high number. I think to most employers or hiring managers, this would be an alarming number uh, to begin with. Um, I mean, naturally for employers, we, we want to retain our people, right? We want to retain good employees and high-performing employees especially. Um, but I'm sure you also have heard of the terms. Um, it's been a you know great buzz, right? And recently, people have been talking about the great attrition, the great resignation, as McKinsey coins it, right? So basically, what this term means, right, is that um, we have been observing a high number of uh, attrition, right, across different industries uh, post-pandemic. And I think partially why this is happening is because Malaysia has been going through a few lockdowns so far, and. Um, during pandemic time, naturally, or lockdown time, right? Naturally, people are a little bit more cautious, reserved, don't want to look out because they are unsure of the career prospects of the new company, unsure of the financial stability and whatnot. And uh, most importantly, during lockdown time, most of the positions were frozen, put on hold. So employees were also not ready to hire people. But as all of us gradually adapt to a new normal, um, the industries pick up, the economy pick up. Uh, we can see that a lot of organizations are starting to be, you know, uh, pick up in terms of hiring. They're increasing their hiring needs. So when that happens, uh, the positions are opening up more and more, right? Especially in the candidate short market like Malaysia. Uh, naturally, uh, candidates can will get headhunted or they will get referred to a certain jobs and whatnot. So people who have not been looking up for the past two years, they're starting to look out. Um, it could be because of the burnout, um, you know, Zoom fatigue that they've been experiencing, you know, looking at the video call all the time, right? Video conferencing calls. Um, and, 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 as, a, as a result of that, um, people start looking out. Not just, not so much because they are not happy with their bosses, leaders or organization, but more so because they want to change. Um, whether it's good or bad change, they don't know. Uh, they want to change and they want to feel refreshed. So therefore, why the number is so high right now uh, as a result of the post-pandemic uh, uh, phenomena? You know, uh, change is always good and it's also quite interesting as well because it gives you that rejuvenation or a new breath of fresh air. Having said that, do you, uh, can you have any, do you have any visibility in your survey that shows uh, employees jumping industries or jumping skill sets? Is that part of that uh, survey that is being captured uh, right now by Robert Walters? Um, majority of the talent prefer a change of industries. Um, but not so much in terms of change of function or core competencies. So I'll give you an example, Ibrahim. So let's say if this person is currently in the head of e-commerce role uh, in a fashion company, right? So uh, usually they will still want to look for a head of e-commerce role in a different fashion company or in a different kind of portfolio or category. Maybe they are in uh, watch and jewelry, right? Jewelries right now. They want to go into a startup or they want to handle a different you know, fashion attire portfolio and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of times it also depends on the employer's willingness and openness. Um, candidates want to jump into different industries, but the challenge here is that typically organizations have a certain set of requirements as to what kind of employees they want to hire. And typically they prefer someone who comes from the exact portfolio industry experience. Um, which makes it makes the talent pool very small. So as long as employers are keeping an open mind to explore ta talent that is not from the same industry, right? Um, a lot of candidates or employees, right, are more than happy to uh, experiment or explore. So the openness from employees is high, but openness from employers, I think, it, it very much depends on the organization and the hiring manager. Okay, uh, one more short break before we continue our conversation with Robert Walters, Malaysia.
Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me Country Director for Robert Walters Malaysia, Tan Irene. Irene, let's talk a little bit more about the consumer sentiment, sorry, the candidate sentiment found in your uh, salary survey 2022. Um, they are looking for three big things, inspiring colleagues and workplace culture. So culture remains to be strong, uh, the desire to have a strong culture is there. Um, one in two professionals across industries in Malaysia are looking for a pay raise today, this year. Professionals are now looking beyond basic salaries and actually look at performance bonuses and prefers flexible work arrangements. Like I said, these are the three core items that we've seen going on for the past few years. Um, nothing surprising there. But what I find is surprising is the outlook for 2022. In your survey, you say that, um, that uh, as market conditions improve, employee retention will be a top priority for organisations. Um, uh, and around 45% of professionals are looking for new jobs and salary for job movers can increase between 15 to 20%. So it seems like employees are looking out, employers want them to stay and uh, everybody is expecting a pay raise. Is this the tone for this year for a majority of the companies in Malaysia? I think whether it's pre or post pandemic, uh, employees are always looking for a salary increment. Um, so the sentiment is very much consistent that uh, they're expecting a generally between 15 to 20% increment when they are moving jobs. But obviously when it comes to niche or highly sought after skill sets uh, in the uh, area where the talent is um, very scarce, right? Then they are able to demand slightly higher increment. Uh, however, one additional thing that uh, talent is looking for in addition to attractive basic salary is, uh, as what you mentioned earlier, which is bonuses, uh, extensive healthcare plan, and most importantly, they're looking for flexible work arrangement. So uh, companies who have a very strong uh, hybrid work model uh, would be very much favoured by employees. Uh, whereas for companies who insist on, um, let's say, full uh, working in the office, right, they would have a slight disadvantage in attracting talent, um, given that the hiring trends right now has uh, changed. All right. Um, Irene, let's close this conversation. Uh, do you have any thoughts on how should employers uh, and employees think about 2022? Um, good questions. I for, uh, for, in terms of employees, I strongly encourage that um, employees uh, sh should believe that they can chart their career path on their own, right? Instead of waiting for employers or your bosses or leaders to come to you and tell you that, you know, Irene, you need to do X, Y, Z, you need to hit this KPI in order for you to be successful or qualified for the promotion. If you're curious, uh, don't wait for the discussion to happen. Initiate the conversation with your bosses. Uh, I think when you're being proactive like that and have a very candid conversation like that, number one, uh, this will be greatly appreciated by your superior because it shows that you are thinking about your career, you are taking ownership. And number two, it also encourages uh, open communication. And this, this way, right, when the employees are asking such, such questions, right, or immediately the employees are also able to tell you clearly what is expected out of you for you to move on to the next role and whatnot. So these are the two pointers that I think that is very helpful from an employee standpoint and perspective that they should chart their career path on their own. Uh, at the same time as for employers, I, I strongly believe that um, other than charting out a clear career progression plan for employees, um, employers should also uh, look into um, plans and initiatives that is very targeted towards welfare, well-being, healthcare, family, and whatnot. Um, you know, we are today we are in a very different world right now post-pandemic. Employees' priorities when it comes to looking for a right job has also changed. Uh, they're not just right looking for a job where they get paid very well or skill set where it matches them. Uh, they're looking for career growth progression, as mentioned earlier. And at the same time, they also want to be supported mentally right, and emotionally by their employers. So that in the long run, right, they, they, they're they not just staying in the organization for a short period of time, one, two years. They can also grow professionally and personally with the organization. So well-being is a very, very important priority for organizations at this point of time. 
You know, that is, that is really wonderful, um, both from the employer perspective as well as employee perspective. Um, we're going to micro-content that even, <laughs> because it's really that well uh, thought of and said. Uh, but that was our conversation with Tan Irene, the country manager for Robert Walters Malaysia. If you've missed any part of this interview, just head on to Astro Awani, look for Notepad. You can also head over to uh, Robert Walters' website uh, and search for Salary Survey 2022, as well as all the other research that they have over there. Until then, thanks very much for watching. My name is Ibrahim Sani. Goodbye.